So, um, so uh, one thing that even Christian says are going to be a bit more of a not an issue, but more of a problem than an issue is that we can't say about the child is oh, so not an issue, especially because they're all parents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it feels a little like. No, I got you. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I wanted to ask. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally, totally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Also, you did not know you were, you were also going to be saying nice things about me today. Surprise! <laughs> I have been angry. I have been bamboozled. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Jack. It's good to see you. I'm not you. hearing any sound. How about now? Can you hear me now? Oh, goodness. How about now? Can you hear me okay. now? Okay. Yeah, I can ah, hear you. It's because I'm whispering. You're not used to that. <laughs> okay, I'm glad to hear that you can hear me. Can you still hear me? You're low. It's low? Okay. How about me? How's my sound coming through for y'all? Lower. <laughs> oh, fascinating. <laughs> How about now? Better. How about now? Oh my gosh. No. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> the people have spoken. Though, I <laughs> they were eating the mic, so... Um... I was not. <laughs> oh my goodness. So, um, is the sound right now okay? I'm trying to just play with it and see if the volume's all right. You're very distant sounding. Okay. Sorry. Um, yes, but for the people on Zoom, the mic is necessary. Mm -mm. No, we're not doing any, um, we're not doing any They could um, read his lips work. if there was a key yeah. whose lips you could read. Well, and if we were going to do that. Okay. Does that sound okay? Better. Okay, okay. good deal. We'll use that. Great. So, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom. I encourage you in these moments before services start to turn to somebody that you have not yet said Shabbat Shalom to, to wish them Shabbat Shalom. For those who are on Zoom, I encourage you to um, type in the chat Shabbat Shalom. Um, and we'll get started in just one moment. Have a C door, I should probably fix that. There it is. Okay, and we are back and up and running, and hopefully, everyone feels the Shabbat greeting. They feel as that they've been greeted for Shabbat. And now we will get into the Shabbat spirit with a nigun that we have not sung in quite a while, but is. Always a good one.
We now welcome Shabbat with the lighting of Shabbat candles. It's my pleasure to invite Quinn Peters to light our Shabbat candles for us. An artist cannot be continually wielding a brush. An artist must stop painting at times to freshen their vision. Living is also an art. We dare not become so absorbed in its processes, in its technical processes, that we lose our consciousness of the general plan. The Sabbath represents those moments when we pause in our brushwork to renew our vision. Having done so, we take ourselves to our painting with clarified vision and renewed energy. This applies to the individual and to the community alike. Mordecai Kaplan. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech Haolam, Ashekichanu We continue getting into the Shabbat spirit with the words Lechu Naranana on page 130. Lechu Naranana. Oh my goodness, that was a little high, sorry. Lechu <laughs> Naranana.
we turn to page 138 to welcome the Shabbat bride with the words of Lechado D. That is low, my goodness. Uh, is this, I wasn't aware that we're doing Shabbat on challenge mode this week. We are. You know, we're working extra hard to get into the we Shabbat We got an spirit. extra soul, we got to put in the extra work. That is right. I'm just trying to make the service a little bit longer as all, well, so that we can get extra in the Shabbat spirit. <laughs> <laughs> page 142. So we continue now with one of my favorite, more old school Tiutim, which in the tradition of liturgical poets everywhere in our tradition is actually an acrostic, which I think is very cool that you get essentially, if you look in the English, it shows up as well, you get Shabbat and it's spelled out on the side in a way that every single verse that we go in brings us one letter closer into the essence of Shabbat as we welcome the ministering angels that enter into our homes in this island in time to draw ever nearer to us that we may benefit from their blessings and from their time in our midst. And we sing together. Shalom Aleichem, Malachi Hashavit, Malachi
Eyes for the Barhu on page 146. One of the projects that student Rabbi Ari has been working on during their time with us has been helping to build out our online Sidur so that we can continue to find new inspiration dur during our Shabbat services. And this poem that we are about to hear is one of the many beautiful poems that we'll hear this evening that are additions thanks to them. Hamari. Aravim, God who brings evenings. You are the master of transitions, the artist of ma'avarim. And we, your people, we are called ivrim, those who pass from one place to the next, who travel to the edge, who seek you in the in-between. We and you, forever becoming, rolling dust into twilight, and darkness into dawn. As you preside over time, the sun rises up and bows low. The moon stretches out and curls in. Our bodies wax and wane. Everything is on the move. Particles flip and twirl. Light floods in and fades away. You offer us sparks of holy time, soul, and space. When Shabbat comes in stillness, we breathe. We are whole. We are here. Baruch ata Adonai hamariv aravim. Amen. We are on page 150 to sing of God's love for us with the words of Ahavat Olam.
levavcha uvechol nafshecha uvechol meotzecha vehayu hadvarim ha'ele asher anochi mitzavecha hayom alevavcha v'shinantam levanecha v'dibarta ba'am. Beshiftecha v'veitecha uvlechtecha v'aderech uvshochbecha uvkumecha uksharetam leot al yadecha v'hayu letotavot beinecha uchtavtam al mezuzot beitecha uvisharecha. Lema antiskeru baasitem et kol mitzotai vitem kedoshim lelohechem ani adonai elohechem asher hotzeti etchem meeretz mitzrayim lihiot lachem lelohim. Ani Adonai Elohechem, Adonai Elohechem, Emet. Mara, can you let us know who will be sharing this next poem with us? Marla Zaro. Marla, thank you. They say cold feet are a sign of turning back the failure of internal will, but I say it can be the other way, the body's anticipation of things to come. Whether demons are nipping at your heels or gnawing within, here's the thing. Settle quietly, close your eyes, then take the most deliberate deep breath, as though it were the very first God's breath. And when you can feel it penetrate every bit of your being, making the rest of your life possible, you open your eyes and take that first step out into the sea of reeds. Watered feet are just the price of coming home. We are on page 158 with the words of Mi Chamocha. Pause a moment to take a deep breath. (sighs) 
whatever was weighing down our week, we hope that it is uplifted, that we can fall asleep tonight and that we wake up feeling weightless with energy and excitement and vigor for whatever it is that tomorrow brings even if it's just enjoying a Shabbat day. You know, one of my favorite teachings about this particular transition from the vigor and gratitude of Micha Mocha into the greater serenity of Hashkivenu is exactly about that weightlessness because Shabbat is a pause in time. The things that we put aside will still be there at the other end of Shabbat. We are not abandoning those responsibilities, but we are saying that there is room enough in the world for us to put those things down and experience a day of perfect rest with the knowledge that those things will be there and we will return to them better equipped than we were before. That holding on to them just out of a sense of obligation doesn't make us more capable. It is in fact the break from it that makes us capable of coming back to the task. Amen. So with that, we turn to page 160 for the words of Hashkivenu. We now come to the central part of our service, the core part of our liturgy, our tefillah, our prayer. We continue on page 164, and we rise in all the ways that we are able. Adonai sevatai tiptach ufi agite hilatecha. Adonai open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruch Adonai. Eloheinu, Elohe avoteinu vimoteinu, Elohe Abraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Elohe Yaakov, Elohe Sarah, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Rachel, Elohe Leah, Ha'el ha 
Hagadol Hagibor Bahanora Elelion Gomer Hasadim Tovim Vekone Hako Bezoher Haste Avot Vimahot Ume Pidula Lip Nevenehem Lema Anshemo Beahava Melech Ozer Moshia Umagen Baruch Ata Adonai Magin Abraham Bezrat Sarah Ata Gibor Leolam Adonai Mechaye HaKol Ata Rav Lehoshia Morin Hata Mechalkel Chaim Bechesed Mechaye HaKol Berachamim Rabim so mech noblim verofe cholim, umatir asurim, umekayem emunato lishene afar, micha mocha baal gevurot, umido melach, melech meni. Mechaye, <laughs> Baruch Ata Adonai Ha'el Ha'kadosh Please take a moment for your own silent prayer and be seated when you are finished.
it is now my pleasure to invite student Rabbi Ari, who is already up to the bima, to stay on the bima and to share with us some words of Torah. So, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. So, because this is me and I like interactive parts, um, please don't get too comfy yet because this first bit does require you to be involved. So there are some instructions. Take a moment with me now to reflect on the last year of your life. Do you remember what it was you were doing in May of 2021? What occupied your days as the spring ripened into summer that year? Who did you miss most in your quieter hours? And on those occasions where you did feel safe enough to leave your house, where did you like to go? Do you remember those things? Are you sure they happened the way you remember them? How would you know if your memories didn't align with the truth? I'm asking these questions for the most part because I don't know my own answers. One of the characteristics of my particular flavors of disability and mental illness is memory loss. There's a reason I often joke that I'm internally geriatric. Symptoms like that are not something most people deal with in their mid-20s. Usually it manifests in smaller ways. Rounds of Marco Polo at home when I forget where my partner is or realizing halfway to the store that, oh, I forgot where my wallet is, it's still on the counter. Sometimes though, it's more than that. The added cost to groceries when the things I buy rot in the fridge uneaten. Missing long-awaited appointments with specialists because I misremembered the time. The thinly veiled frustration when I tell someone the same story three times in one day. Strangers can tell me I'm too young to be disabled till the cows come home. They don't have to hesitate when they look an old friend in the eyes and for just a moment, can't quite place their name. Our Parsha this week, Parashat Behav, deals with two topics that are therefore very close to my heart, memory and time. As part of the ongoing conversation occurring atop Mount Sinai, Hashem dictates to Moshe the structures that form the basis for Jewish cycles of growth, rest, and renewal. The Shemitah guarantees that every seventh year the land shall have a Shabbat Shabbaton, a Sabbath of Sabbaths, a Sabbath of complete rest in which no new crop is sown or tended. Zooming out even further, every seventh cycle of these seven years, 49 in total, the 50th year is hallowed as a Yovel, a jubilee year in which we proclaim release throughout the land to all its inhabitants. We are commanded to return to our holding and each of us will return to our family. And yes, before you ask, this is where my last name comes from. Be it in cycles of seven years or 50, the text of this Parsha makes its through line very clear. For land and living beings alike, rest and renewal requires a reset. In a Shemitah year, which this year happens to also be, the fields are left unseeded and the vines untrimmed in their year off, their annual cycles broken. So too with humans. With the Yovel, all lands and all homes are returned to their original stewards, all indentured and enslaved persons free, all debts forgiven. Whatever came before is wiped away, and what comes next starts with a clean and level slate. The contracts we make amongst ourselves yield to the covenant we have with God, so that cycles of power can be broken and all people given the opportunity to begin their lives again. This societal rhythm of reset and renewal given to us by our tradition though, raises an interesting challenge. We cross over from one phase of our lives to the next, our logistical ties and obligations to others ended. Which parts of ourselves carry over in that transition? And which parts are those that come out in the wash? With this cycle, 
we consciously reckon with the choice that our brains make for us subconsciously all the time. Which things are erased and which things preserved? What ties we uphold and which will be left to return to, to, return to the earth as the overgrowth in our fields? How much of who and what we are is tied up and who and what we have been? Given the opportunity to start anew, what parts of yourself would still be there on the other side? So, here I stand at this bima of sacred service on the precipice of my own reset. Next week, I stop being Ari, the rabbinic intern at TBT, and open myself up to whatever comes next. I want that shift to feel like freedom, to declare release and celebrate, and still some part of me is, in truth, afraid. My brain cannot retain its memory of the passage of time on its own. Try as I might, the details fall through like fine sand, slipping through my fingers the more I try to grasp them. All else being the same, the unusual or outstanding moments in my life are just as likely to fall to this brain fog as the minutia of the everyday. Even this internship now coming to its close has brought its own series of those fears. The time has been so full and yet so short. It's important to me that what I have done and learned from my tenure here endures, even if only in my own mind. How then do you make a memory last? What alchemy of society or the spirit turns something that you do into part of the someone you are, an internal innate essence that cannot be lost or forgotten? In typical Jewish fashion, these questions tend to only spawn more and equally complicated questions rather than concrete answers. That being said, here are mine. The things we create outside of ourselves outlast us. I'm not talking about the obvious examples, archives and monuments designed to serve the specific purpose of preserving memory. The creations with the greatest power for resisting that inner fog have their corresponding memories stored in multiple places and very often in multiple minds. The initial impression you made on a then stranger is cited years later in the toast they give at your wedding. The flavor of your family's specific haroset recipe echoes in your mouth every spring as Pesach approaches. You take a friend to see a movie, and now its soundtrack also brings back their whispers to you in the theater. Our brains can only hold so much, and try as we may, we can never retain all of the details. There is no memory without defect, and something will always be lost, a prospect that I find particularly scares many non-disabled people who aren't forced to reckon with the finite limits of their body and mind on a regular basis. However, these moments of creative connection are touchstones we can rely on to remember, be it days or decades down the road. More than any record or testimony we may seek out, these touchstones tell us what it is we cherish about that memory. Not only what happened, but why it mattered to us. That essence is what we offer to God, to each other, and to ourselves. Here are some of my own touchstones for my time with this deeply creative, deeply kind congregation. The huge sigh of relief when Marla saw my message over Zoom during Friday night services and stepped in to do a reading before candle lighting at the last possible minute. The sensation of keeping sparkling lemonade from spewing out my nose in surprise during the Purim celebration when I realized that Ted had chosen to adapt Shakespeare to make Brutus eulogize Haman. The squeak of dry erase marker on the whiteboard as I wrote down different names for the divine suggested by the students in my first ever class about writing blessings. The gentle sway and hum as I bopped along to the music coming out of my computer and listened through Cheryl's contributions to the new congregational Shabbat playlist. 
none of these memories are perfect. They all contain their own defects, things I did wrong, or a bit late, or too much, or not enough. If we wanted to create a truly clear and perfect reset, perhaps there are those who would argue that those memories should be erased. What those memories are, however, is mine. And far more importantly, ours. They could only be created by this group of people in this specific place and at this specific time. They are singular in that way and therefore cannot be replaced. The joy, warmth, and trust they contain is an offering of its own kind. The hallmarks of this iteration, of this cycle, in my own rabbinic journey. There will be other internships for me, just as perhaps there will be other rabbinic interns for this congregation. However, we were each other's first in that way, and that bond makes us special to one another. As these cycles of time do their dance and seasons come and seasons go, there will remain this memory, a marker in my mind of here and now and you. It isn't perfect, but it's real. And that's what makes it last. Shabbat Shalom. You are right. The past six months have flown by, and the time has seemed both so short and so completely filled to the brim. As you mentioned, um, there were a number of ways that you made your print on our community, and I just want to share some of the ways that, have, that I have appreciated the most. Um, you helped me to try and find the different ways that we could make our community and our online experience more friendly and inclusive and feel as though when you're on Zoom with us, which we're so glad that you are, that you feel as though you are in the room with us and also that you're not missing out, that where you are experiencing Shabbat is just as exciting and just as meaningful. Uh, you helped us to get into the Shabbat mood with a playlist, which I listen to myself sometimes when I drive to services on Friday afternoon slash early evening, depending on the Shabbat. Um, you shared your insights, views of the world, experience, and Torah through sermons, just like the one we heard this evening. And you helped me as a mentor to think about what it looks like to talk about the Jewish present and future and past, no matter how we remember it and how we can bring our memories together and how we are transformed through those conversations. There are so many twists and turns along the way to becoming a rabbi. And I'm glad, we're glad, that Temple Beth Torah got to be a part of your journey. And I look forward to seeing the places that you'll go, the people you'll inspire, and the Torah that you'll bring into the world. So, in this moment, we share this blessing with you. May each step you take on your journey embolden you to take another. Like our ancestors, may you allow yourself to get a little lost sometimes. And may you notice the ways that you are transformed in the moments of wilderness. With each new piece of knowledge that you come to know, may you find two, three, ten, a hundred new things that you are curious about. 
May you inspire others, but more importantly, may you continue to search for and receive inspiration from others and from the world. And may you be a blessing to the Jewish people. And let us all say, Amen. Amen. We do have a um, small gift um, that Cheryl will present as a gratitude. The small tote bag I found here at Temple Mount Power, we love flowers. And um, sunflowers are especially meaningful now in this world. Mm -hmm. um, I lost a friend who loved flowers, especially sunflowers. And we know that there's the flowers of Ukraine. So I picked this bouquet on behalf of our congregation to give to you. Thank you. Really so very meaningful. Thank you so much. I will acknowledge uh, student rabbi Ari did not know that I was going to share any words after their words um, so uh, it was a little bit of a, a sneak attack but hopefully one of the best kind um, and now um, we will return to the rest of our service thinking of the words of Torah that student Rabbi Ari shared with us, we think of those who are in need of healing of body, healing of spirit, healing of soul. If you are thinking of anyone who is in need of healing at this time, if you are on Zoom with us, please feel free to type their name in the chat or to say their name aloud in the room to someone next to you. And for, some, and for those who are in the room with us this evening, please feel free to share their name aloud or in your heart as my hand passes over your section. For all those names that we have said aloud, those that we've typed in the chat, and those that we keep in our hearts, we turn to page 371 for the words of Misha Beirach. pleasure to invite Ted Bressler to share with us a reading for the caregivers in our lives.
God of health and healing, bless our family and friends who have taken on the sacred task of giving care and comfort to their loved ones, committing their time, energy, and physical labor to the well-being of dear ones at a time of immeasurable need. Grant them wisdom and skill, compassion and dedication, energy and endurance as time passes and tasks increase. Remind them to care for themselves and to nourish their own bodies and souls so easily forgotten in this time of need. Source and shelter, rock of life, bless all who dedicate themselves to the care of others and bring lasting health and healing to all in need. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We will hear another poem that student Rabbi Ari will introduce and then share. So if you're not already aware of the existence of Dev Inspire, um, you're welcome. I cannot recommend highly enough that you check out their work. One of the things that was one of my driving forces with selecting pieces to contribute to the online Sudor was to introduce a wider variety of voices into our canon of what makes up a liturgical poem. And we are blessed with an outpouring of creative Torah coming from new up and coming Jewish poets, liturgists, rabbis, and visionaries of every background who are expanding our notion of what it means to write for prayer. And I wanted to particularly share this piece of Devon's because it reimagines the Elenu in a way that I haven't seen anyone else do. And I really hope it inspires all of you and future readers the way it does me. I dreamt the most glorious dream. I had just ended a game of hangman in the ruins of the ancient city, the one we mistook for the world to come. Now all we do is go for picnics, spell strangers' names in the skies, and leave the future long since past, wakefully behind. In front, you presented yourself in front of me. I could have sworn I caught God staring through your face at the place I was taught not to feel or see. We turn to page 586 for the words of Alenu. Please rise in all the ways you are able. Alenu le shabeach la don hakol la teit gedula liotzer breishit shelo asanu kigoye haratzot Velo samanu kamish pachot adama, shelo sam chalkenu kahem, vegor aleinu kecho hamonam, vaanachnu korim, umishtachavim umodim, lifne melech. Malachi Hamachim Hakadosh Baruchu Venemar Behayadonai Lemelech Al Gola Aretz Vayom Havu Vayom Havu Please be seated. It is a fearful thing to love what death can touch. A fearful thing to love, hope, dream, to be, to be, and oh, to lose. 
a thing for fools this, and a holy thing, a holy thing to love. For your life has lived in me. Your laugh once lifted me. Your word was gift to me. To remember this brings a painful joy. Tis a human thing, love, a holy thing to love what death has touched. This evening, we remember loved ones who have been called to eternal rest in recent days. Please rise as your loved one's name is read. Joanne Hageman, remembered by Ann Anderson. And we remember those whose yard sites occurred this past week. Please rise as your loved one's name is read. Faye Corbett, mother of Arnold Corbett. Ralph L. Font, brother of Betty Rogoff. Zachary Levy, remembered by Lulu Levy and grandfather of Matthew Levy. Lily Ratner, Sh Ratner Shirey, mother of Michelle Burke. Mary Schwartz, remembered by Phyllis Domino. Eliza Strad, remembered by Joel Strad. Kathleen Toth, mother of Chris Toth. We now invite all who are observing their first year of mourning to rise at this time. And now we rise with our mourners as we turn to page 598 for the words of the Mourner's Kaddish. Yitzkadal v'yitzkadash shemei rabba ba'alma divra chirute v'yamlich malchute v'chayechon uv'yomechon uv'chayet d'cho b'et Yisrael ba'agala uv'izman kariv imru amen Yehe Shme Rabba Mavorach Le Olam Ulame Almaya. Vit Barach Vish Dabach Vit Paar Vit Ramam Vit Nase Vit Hadar Vit Ale Vit Halal Shme de Kudsha Rihu. Le Ela mean called Birchata Vashirata. Tush Bechata Venechemata. Dami Ran Belma Vimru Amen. Yehe Shlama Rabba mean Shemaya. Vechayim aleinu ve'alko Yisrael v'imru. Amen. O se shalom v'imramav, hu ya'ase shalom. Aleinu ve'alko Yisrael ve'alko Yoshvei Tevel v'imru. Amen. Zichonam livracha, may all of their memories be for a blessing. And to which we say. Amen. Please be seated. We now come to our announcements, and it is my pleasure to invite Michelle Eisenbrock to share words of announcement with us. Michelle, what's going on in our community? Glad you asked. <laughs> Shabbat shalom. Shabbat, Shabbat shalom. shalom. A reminder that Torah study resumes this Sunday at 11 a.m. Finally, I could sleep in. Please note the time change. Shavuot is around the corner. Join us in Congregation Beth Emek in June for two special Shavuot programs. On Saturday, June 4th at 7.30 p.m., we will be hosting a Shavuot service and study session here at TBT. Then on Sunday, June 5th at 12 noon, we'll be having a Shavuot edition of Soulful Storytime with a special ice cream social to follow. Pre-registration is encouraged. 
There will also be an online Shavuot Yisker service at 10.30 a.m. that Sunday. Have you checked out our TBT 60th anniversary information page on the website lately? We're updating it frequently with more event details as well as registration and payment li links. While you're there, add your voice to our community pro poem using the online form. You can also contribute using cards on the table in the social hall. It's easy, just a sentence or two, no prior writing experience necessary. And I'll tell you, I am no poet, but it was very easy for me to briefly express my memories and hopes uh, uh, for TBT. Invita invitations to the gala on June 25th have been mailed and we are still looking for contributions of items to be included in our silent auction, as well as sponsors for the printed program and gala. Because we know that protecting democracy and fighting for justice and sustainability go hand in hand, RACCA's new climate justice campaign will work in tandem with the national Every Voice, Every Vote campaign. Join Rabbi Zoe on Thursday, June 9th at 7 p.m. as she helps kick off a statewide RACCA climate justice campaign to build, to build Jewish interfaith and multiracial coalition powerful enough to address the climate crisis that is impacting every Californian. And finally, thank you to Karen Bressler and Susan Amaro for representing the worship committee and to Sean Robin for being on AV this evening and Mazel Tov student, uh, student Rabbi Ari and thank you so much for your contributions over these past six months. Thank you. And for those who are wondering, what are we studying in Torah study at 11 a.m. on are Sunday? We We're studying Daniel, which is mind-blowing, some of the stories that we have in here. It is full of drama and um, lots of um, really, um, really fiery personalities. No pun intended for those who know some of the stories. I was going to say. People, people are thrown into pits of fire. It's fine. Um, they so, got better. It's okay. Yes, they all survive. It's all part of the miracle. So if you are interested in drama and fiery personalities and exciting text to study, 11 a.m. Now's your chance. Come join us. Um, we continue with some blessings. It's always good to share blessings. So we take this moment to share a family blessing, and I encourage you to reach out to family, whether they are chosen family, familial family, however you want to describe or define family. This is the moment. And for those who want to send a blessing to someone you are not currently with, let's close our eyes and hold their image in our hearts and on our minds. May God bless you and keep you. May God shine God's face upon you and be gracious to you. May God's face turn to you and grant you peace, to which we say, Amen. And now for Kiddush and Motzi. I'm going to do this very carefully so I don't spill anything. I'm going to steal this one over here. Maximum effort. good yes and for those on zoom i hope you caught that that was your two second window to grab your sweet beverage uh, because we are going to get started on page 123 with the blessing baruch adonai eloheinu melech haolam borei Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Asher kitshanu 
Before we partake in the challah, I just want to share an extra special thank you to Quinn Peters for baking a beautiful challah and for sharing it with us this evening. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam hamotzi lechem in haaretz Shabbat Shalom. And before we completely send you on your way, we're going to sing a quick Ose Shalom. It's always good to pray for peace, especially when we are together. Ose Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom.